All right, everyone. Well, this week I thought we would revisit a tutorial I did some time ago where I used the highlighted values, or rather the luminosity of an image, to create an interesting design effect. And I had a lot of people asking questions on that, and a lot of people thought it was really cool and wondered how else can I apply it to something. So I thought I would revisit it with a different image and even add a couple of things that I didn't have in the original tutorial that I've had thought up since then. So let's start with our image. Here I have an image of this young lady and we're going to load the luminosity as a selection. And you can simply do that by pressing the option command and the little tilde key, which is next to the number one on your keyboard. Or you can also go into the channels palette and right here in the very first channel, the RGB composite channel, if you can command or control click directly on that channel, it does the exact same thing. It's loading the luminosity of the overall image. If you were to command or control click on either of the, any of these individual channels, it would load the luminosity of that specific channel. But by command or control clicking on the composite channel, you're loading the luminosity of the entire image. So with that selection made, let's go ahead and create a new alpha channel inside our, al our channels palette. And the selection is still active, as you can see. I'm going to go ahead and fill it with white. And with white as my background color, I'm just going to press command delete. That would be control backspace on a PC. Now, we're going to inverse the selection. We want to inverse the selected area by going into the select menu and choosing inverse. And then I'm going to press option delete this time, which will fill the foreground color, which is black, just once, darkening that those darker areas just a little bit more. Well, now I'm going to go into select again and now inverse those that selection once more. So now we're back highlighted or selected on the highlighted areas. And now I'm going to press Command Delete to fill it with white. I'm going to do it three times. I'm going to do it Command Delete, Delete, Delete. So really has blown out a lot of the detail in the face, leaving very, very little of it left. So we've got only really the, the lighter and darker areas. Well, I'm going to go ahead and enhance that a little bit more by bringing up my levels. Let's go under Image Adjustment and go to Levels. And I'm going to bring up, or actually push in the dark slider to about 10. Very subtle, but it enhances the detail a little bit in those darker areas. And then we'll click OK. So now what I want to do is brush away areas I don't necessarily need. And the fact that some areas are white and some aren't makes it a little easier. I'm going to bring white to the foreground and select my brush tool. And a really small brush, actually in this case about a 60, and a very soft edge. I'm just going to paint away the areas I don't necessarily need for my design. I'm just going to paint away some of the hair here. And let's just brush away some of this area here. And I'm just going to brush away all this area in here. And this will be left to be my design area where I can add my text or do whatever I want to do there. Now, I'm going to zoom out a little bit. Now, there's a little bit of the hair area up here I don't necessarily want. And I want the overall image to be a little bit bigger. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to press Command or Control T. Holding down my Shift key, I'm going to start up here in the upper left handle here and just kind of scale this image up a little bit just so we can get that maybe to where that loop of hair is touching this little curve of this hair right here is just touching the top edge there then we'll click OK so now we've got what's a pretty good composition based on this image and we've got pretty good detail in the dark areas which in this case we're working on an alpha channel as we know alpha channels anything that's white or gray is going to be your selected areas anything that's black is going to be unselected so looking at this image we want the exact opposite when we generate a selection so we need to invert the values i'm going to press command or control i and it will basically turn it into a negative so now the light er light areas i'm looking at will be my active selection when i load it in so let's zoom out so let's zoom in a little bit. I'm going to go back into my composite channel, back into my layers. I'm going to go ahead and create a new blank layer and just fill it with white by pressing Command Delete. That would be Control Backspace on a PC. Then I'm going to go ahead and create a new blank layer above that one. And now we're going to go under the Select menu and go to Load Selection. And we're using this image. We're going to go into the channel, look for Alpha 1, which is the channel we created. And we're going to use New Selection. And let's we'll go ahead and click OK. So there's that active selection. So now let's go ahead and fill it with a color. Well, I'm going to go ahead and fill it just so you can see what it looked like fill with a solid color. Let's go here and choose this blue color here. And I'm going to press Option Delete. And then I'll deselect. So you see it's filled with a solid color. And this is what I did in the original tutorial, and it came out looking great. But then I thought, you know, 
it is a graphic on its own layer. As you can see in the layers, it's the white background is separate, and the graphic element is is on its own layer. So what if we go ahead and lock the transparency and get a little creative with the filling? Because I actually saw this on a movie poster, and I was thinking, wow, that would look cool on this very technique, which is why I wanted to revisit it. What we're going to do is select the gradient tool, and then go up here and click on the gradient editor. And we're going to choose any one of these gradients. It really doesn't matter which one you choose. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and choose this one right here. But here's what, here's what we're going to do. In the gradient type menu here, if you click on it, you have a choice between solid and noise. Now, solid is, of course, the default, and that gives you just the solid colors that you see in a standard gradient. But if you select noise, watch what happens. It turns into a really strainy, kind of noisy blur. It's almost like a motion blur of an image. And you don't have to necessarily live with what you're looking at here. If you go down here toward the bottom where it says options and click on randomize, it'll give you a different configuration every time. So you can keep going through, you'll find something that catches your eye, perhaps. Let's go through and maybe get something kind of dark in there. So let's say we like that green gradient right there. So I go ahead and click OK. So now my gradient tool is ready with that transparency locked, and I just drag the gradient over this image. It's only going to stay within the realm of those pixels on that layer because it's locking the transparency. It's leaving the transparent areas alone and giving me a really cool effect with that gradient. So instead of a fill, we're adding, giving this same kind of motion to it and a little bit of energy to it by adding that noisy gradient to it. And if we don't necessarily like that, again, we can go in here and click Randomize over and over get a different configuration. There's one with a lot more colors in it. Let's see what that looks like. And let's go from a different direction, perhaps. So you can see it's all kinds of different possibilities by just playing with those gradients. It doesn't necessarily have to be a standard fill. We can even come in from the top here, coming from the bottom. It gives you a very, very different result altogether. So it's taking it a little bit further beyond than just filling it with a color but adding more elements to it by putting in a gradient in there and giving it something a little more interesting. So let's add one more last thing in here. I'm going to go in here in the text and just add a piece of text element here. So let's call this Eve. But here's a cool thing. A little quick text tip. If I go in here and I highlight this text and let's say I scale it up. And let's go in here and perhaps change the font. Two, let's do, where's my little Futura? Right there. Let's change it to that. Here's a cool thing. If you highlight one letter, go into the text and open up the character palette, which is right here. And you can go in here and make that one letter bigger by this little slider right here. We'll increase the size of that letter. But doing it, it's doing it based on the baseline here. So you can drop it below the baseline with this little setting here. Use the scrubby slider and just narrow it down. And that gives that text a little bit more of a design element, but it's still editable text. You did it using the character palette, and it gives you a very interesting effect. So more design techniques. It's taking that image, using the luminosity, and creating an interesting design element, and then adding that gradient in there to give it a little bit more life to it. And a quick little text tip in there. Experiment with yourself. See what kind of cool things you can come up with. And have fun.